In this video I'm going to take a look at organic compounds and we'll be looking at these very important terms homologous series and functional groups. So we'll start off by looking at a, a series of organic compounds known as the alkenes. So I've drawn up in black there the first three alkenes. So on the left we've got ethene with two carbons, then we've got propene in the middle with three carbons, and we've got butene or butuanine on the right there with four carbons. So these all belong to the same sort of class of organic compound, or you could think of it as a family, an organic family. So why do they belong to the same class of organic compound or the same organic family? Well, it's because of the presence of the carbon-carbon double bond in each of the molecules. So you can see each compound contains this carbon-carbon double bond. Now in the case of alkenes, the carbon-carbon double bond is what gives it its characteristic reactions. And so we call this the functional group. So the functional group is the part of the molecule that gives the molecule its characteristic reactions. You might have spotted something else that's similar about these molecules and it's to do with the ratio between the carbons and hydrogens. In each of these alkenes we have the same ratio of carbons to hydrogens. So for every carbon we have twice as many hydrogens. So we've got two carbons, four hydrogens. Three carbons, six hydrogens four carbons, eight hydrogens. So I've written the three formulae up for those three alkenes and you can see at the bottom there I've got the generic formula, so the sort of the nth term formula, which is CnH2n. So we call this the general formula. Now you might remember I used the term organic family at the start of the video well, there's an actual proper term for that. We can't use family in um, an A-level exam. It's just not advanced enough. But it's a good way to think about it. We call such organic groups of organic compounds homologous series. So what makes a homologous series? Well, the compounds must contain the same functional group. So in the case of the alkenes, it's the carbon-carbon double bond. And the compounds also have the same general formula. So homologous series, same functional group, same general formula. Now if like me you're interested in the origin of words then you'll be interested to know that the word homologous actually comes from two Greek words homo which means the same and logos which means ratio and hopefully you can see the link between homologous, same ratio, and what we've already discussed. So there's two more homologous series for you to look at. We've got the alcohols and the carboxylic acids. So if you have a look at those two, can you work out what the functional groups are and what the general formula is? So the functional group for the alcohols is a carbon with an OH group directly attached. That's known as a hydroxyl group. And the carboxylic acid functional group is a C double bond O with a hydroxyl group directly attached. And that's known as a carboxyl group, hence the name carboxylic acid. And the general formula I've written at the top there in purple, so we've got for the alcohols CN, H2N plus 1, OH, so we're showing the functional group in the general formula. So when N is 1, we would have 2 times 1 plus 1, so 3 hydrogens, which is what we've got, CH3, and then the functional group, the OH group there. The carboxylic acid general formula looks very, very similar. So we've got that CnH2n plus 1 going on again. And we've also got then the functional group, the COOH. So if you think about it, 
the functional group contains a carbon and so the first carboxylic acid, so this is methanoic acid, this doesn't have any other carbons other than the functional group carbon. So this carbon here, this N would be zero, so we would have no extra carbons other than the one in the functional group. The hydrogens, well that would be two times zero plus one, which gives us the one here. And then the second is ethanoic acid. Remember, we, we've got the, the carbon sort of tied in with the functional group. So we've got, a, we've got one of the carbon, got two all together, but one's in the functional group. So the C, N, so N is one. So H, two, N, so that's two plus one is three. So we've got C, H, three, C, O, H. So we'll just finish with the information in blue now. The homologous series show a gradual change in physical properties. So things like boiling point or could be solubility. So if we look at the alcohols, the boiling points of these alcohols would increase as the number of carbons increases. So you get that gradual change, gradual increase or solubility. This is the most soluble alcohol of this particular homologous series. Slightly less soluble, slightly less soluble again. So we've got this gradual change. Another thing to point out is that each member of a homologous series differs by CH2. So you can see the difference between this one and this one is this CH2 group. And then the next one, there's an extra CH2 group inserted. And you can see that the carboxylic acids show exactly the same pattern as well. And the other thing to point out is that homologous series or members of the same homologous series would have the same chemical properties and that's because they contain the same functional group. Remember the functional group is the part of the molecule that is responsible for its reactions. So in the case of the alcohols it's the hydroxyl group and in the case of the carboxylic acids it's the carboxyl group. And we started the video with the alkenes they would have the same um, chemical properties because of the C double bond C. So just before I finish, I'm going to go through the eight homologous series that we study at AS and I'll point out the functional groups as I go. And I'm also going to use the three carbon version of each of them. So we'll start with the alkanes. The three carbon alkane is propane. Now alkanes don't have a functional group, it's basically just carbon-carbon single bonds and then obviously filled up with hydrogen and remember that carbon can form four bonds. So there you can see at each end carbon's bonded to three hydrogens and then the fourth bond is obviously this bond here. The middle carbon only has two hydrogens attached because the other two bonds are bonding to the other carbons in the chain. And there's the three carbon alkene propane. And you can see I've labelled up the functional group there, the carbon carbon double bond. And so alcohols, we've got propanol, and the functional group is the OH group. And remember, we mentioned earlier that that's called the hydroxyl group. Carboxylic acids, so we've got propanoic acid, and the functional group is all of this part here. And remember, this is called a carboxyl group. So move on to the aldehydes now. So we've got propanal here. And the functional group is all of this here. So it's C double bond O with the hydrogen attached. And very similar to the aldehydes, we've got the ketones. And we've got propanone here. And in a ketone, the difference between a ketone and an aldehyde is the C double bond O, the functional group, is part of the carbon chain, whereas in the aldehyde it was at the end of the carbon chain. That's how I had that hydrogen attached as well. So in a ketone, the C double bond O functional group is within the carbon chain. We've also got the halogenoalkanes. So basically, if you look at the name halogenoalkane, it's an alkane with a halogen replacing one of the hydrogens. And so this X here represents any of the halogens.
So I'm specifying now that the halogen is chlorine. So the functional group is this carbon bonded to a halogen, so chlorine in this case. And because it's a chlorine, this halogenoalkane will be called 1-chloropropane. I've saved the best to last, that's the esters. So we've got a lot going on on this board. Um, just quickly explain the functional group is this C double bond or single bond or. And esters are strange in the sense that they've named back to front. So I've stuck with the three carbon idea. So we've got a propyl group on the right hand side of the functional group. But that's actually the first part of the name. And then this green section, if you like, is um, called a propanoate group. So it actually gives it the second part of the name. So this ester would be called propyl propanoate. And finally, just to mention this excellent video that's up on YouTube called It's a Family Thing. If you search for that, maybe put chemistry in as well. Um, it's, a, it's a really clever uh, wrap that um, explains all the different organic functional groups.